Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. Ladies and gentlemen, the national...
President, Mrs. Febres Cordero, trips with the serious threats to Ecuador's economic, political, and social well-being. You are an articulate champion of free enterprise and those democratic ideals that are close to the hearts of the American people. To bolster the democratic institutions of your country, we also applaud your moves to encourage private sector growth and invigorate your economy. The United States stands by your side, and we will continue to do all we can to help. When I say the United States stands with you, that is especially true when it comes to your determination to defeat the twin menace of internationalists here. Drug traffickers and terrorists are the enemies of all decent people. And the United States is proud to be your ally in this brave struggle. In a speech to your countrymen, Mr. President, you advised your citizens to, quote, stand up when it is a matter of defending honor and freedom. Well, that's dictatorship, left and right, as has Ecuador. As you've pointed out on several occasions, democracy and the protection of human rights is the surest way to peace as well as freedom. It is no mere coincidence that those few nations controlled by oppressive communist regimes and that means every person from the north slope of Alaska to the tip of Tierra del Fuego. We are all Americans. And today, we are proud to welcome you, President Pedro Cordero, as the leader of free people, as a man with Cordero, welcome. It began with simultaneous battles to obtain political independence. And it continues today with the present defense of democracy, of liberty, and of individual rights, a defense of the American wealth from commercial monopolies until the tremendous confrontation of the Second World War, our peoples have been united, and our governments have enjoyed very strong cooperation. The need of belonging to their respective countries, to revitalize economies that have suffered setbacks, to return to the individual and groups the cooperation between our peoples and governments and international cooperation in general. His Holiness John Paul II of May 1986, the year of peace, requires us to adopt important law and harmony. Peace, unfortunately nowadays, has great enemies. The savagery of terrorism, which in its evil, neither res governments which consider that man is at the center of creation and that man is the main act of history 
should cooperate another enemy, the agents of war, the ideological motivators of aggression, which contribute certain parts of the world have ever taken root in our land. We practice a democracy that it allows for the best social organization. It is only by prevalence of democratic regimes that stem from the sovereign will of our people that our continent and the whole world will be able to enjoy a true and enduring peace. We are careful observers of the standards of human rights generated by national and international against lawlessness. Above all, that lawlessness which in its cruelest form, terrorism, undermines successional obligations. In an effort which has been widely recognized by the international press and the world financial community, we have successfully rescheduled our foreign debt, weapons of law and order. We have not at any time neglected, and it keeps being our main concern is to flourish without peace. And the well-being of all our peoples, the stability of this whole hemisphere is a danger. In order to achieve uh, social well-being, we require, we wish to prove that with liberty and free initiatives, it is indeed possible to reach standards of living which are adequate to the human being. I am sure, Mr. President, that this visit, which originated from your general generous hospitality and that of the people of your country, will bring our two nations closer, strengthening their common ideals. And at the same time, it gives my wife and me the opportunity to reaffirm our sincere friendship for you and your esteemed wife. Thank you.